All right, next up, I want to talk about aldehydes and ketones. These are similar molecules in that the most interesting bit is a double bonded oxygen somewhere on the chain of carbons. For aldehydes, the double bonded oxygen has to be at the very end of the molecule. Now, these are all on the right side. It could have just as easily been on the left side. Whereas for ketones, the double bonded oxygen is somewhere in the middle of the carbon chain. Here it's on the second carbon, it looks like it might be on the fourth one here. In any case, all double bonded oxygens mean it's an aldehyde or a ketone. Aldehydes are going to be named similarly to alcohols, but they get an AL ending. Ketones are going to get an ONE ending. And the only major difference between the way that you name them is because aldehydes are a double bonded oxygen at the end of a molecule, we don't need a number to tell us where the double bonded oxygen is. With an alcohol, we do need to know where the OH is, but not here. It has to be on carbon number one. For a ketone, a ketone can be anywhere in the middle. And as long as there's more than one possibility for the middle, you're probably going to need a number to tell us where that double bonded oxygen is. Let's try some of these, eh? Let's try naming some aldehydes first. Here's one. Let's count the longest carbon chain, and then we'll add an AL ending. One, two, three, four, five. That's pent for five. It's all single bonds and it's an aldehyde. Again, we don't need a number to say where the aldehyde is because it has to be at the very beginning. It has to be on carbon one. Let's try this one down here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, this is a pent as well. It's all single bonds, except of course for the double bonded oxygen. All, they're, all the carbon-carbon bonds are single, I should say. Pent an al. Oh, I guess it is the same molecule. Except here we have two single carbon chains. And that's on carbon four. So it's 4 4 dimethyl pentanal. Can you guys read that? Good. And finally, I would just want to point out that the aldehyde gets precedence over alcohol in naming. So if you have both, it's an aldehyde. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to call this octanal. And on carbon seven, we have an OH group. Now, when an OH group is the most interesting bit, we name it as an alcohol, octanol, for example. But here, it's not the most interesting bit, it's just hanging off. We call it a hydroxy. 7 hydroxy octanol. Huh, octanol, I should say. Let's try this again, but with ketones. Here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbon chain. Man, I must have a thing for 5. All carbon carbon single bonds, and we have a double bonded oxygen. But it's in the middle, so it's an own, a ketone. But that double bonded oxygen didn't have to be on the second one. It could have just as easily been on the third one. I mean, it wasn't, but it could have been, which means we have to put a two here to show that that's where the ketone group is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've numbered it so that the double bonded oxygen gets the lowest number because it is the highest precedence here. It looks like we have an oct, oh, it looks like we have an oct, but it's not all single bonds now. Now we have a double bond starting at carbon five. You guys remember how to name alkenes? Oh man, I'm falling apart here. Oct five ene, and we need to tell people where the double bonded oxygen is to own. Now notice again, I cut off the final E of ene when I added something else to the end. Oct 5 ene 2 own. Beautiful. And we'll try this one. Again, this is supposed to get the lowest number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
nine. Ooh, a non. All the carbons are single bonds, so it's non-nan. And we have to tell people where the own is. It's on carbon four. Non-an four own. Now the other thing is we have a hydroxy on carbon eight and an ethyl, a two carbon chain hanging off carbon seven. So this becomes seven ethyl, eight hydroxy, uh, and there's no space here. That's all one word. 7-ethyl-8-hydroxy-non-an-4-own. Nine carbons, all single bonded together. Double bonded oxygen on the fourth carbon. OH group on the eighth carbon and a two carbon chain ethyl group on carbon seven. It's exactly what we've got here. What a beautiful thing. The last things I want to point out are the properties of aldehydes and ketones. So, number one, they're more polar than the alcohols are. So if you have a three carbon chain with an OH on it, and the same three carbon chain with a double bonded O on it, or even a three carbon chain with a double bonded O in the middle, the fact that the O is double bonded and it's so electronegative makes these two molecules much more polar than this one. I think the polarity of these two uh, is pretty much the same. This one may be a little more polar, but it's pretty much the same. The aldehydes and ketones are more polar, they're more soluble in water, etc., etc. Now, even though they're more polar, so they have stronger dipole dipole forces, they have lower boiling and melting points than the alcohols because the alcohol has hydrogen bonding. When O is connected to H, you end up with this mysterious hydrogen bonding intermolecular force. And so of these, this one has the highest boiling point, even though it has the lowest polarity of the three. And the last thing that I want to point out to you is that the double bonded oxygen, like carbon double bonded to an oxygen, has a very special reactivity. The group itself is called a carbonyl group. And when it's a substituent, we're actually going to call it oxo, the same way we called OH hydroxy in an earlier thing. But what's really important for you right now is to recognize that this oxygen steals electron density away from the carbon. The oxygen is actually a little more negative than you would expect, and the carbon is a little more positive than you would expect. This is the same that's delta minus and delta plus. This is the same for aldehydes and ketones and it makes a huge deal in reactivity. If you have something that's very negatively charged, like an OH minus group, that O is going to be attracted to that particular carbon. Keep that in mind when you're doing reactions. But for now, just remember how to name aldehydes and ketones and keep these properties in mind. Best of luck.